Hey everybody, welcome back to the Evan Knits Things YouTube channel. I'm Evan, and I knit things. I will say, I also crochet and cross stitch and do a variety of other crafts, but you can find me doing all of those crafty things here on YouTube, on Instagram, and Ravelry, all under the name of Evan Knits Things. Convenient, right? So this is episode seven of my 2024 podcast series, where I tell you everything I've been up to in the world of crafting this week. So that being said, let's just jump right in. So this week I had quite a few goals and quite a few projects. Well, actually not quite a few goals. Um, in my brain quite a few goals. Things that I actually wrote down and talked to you guys about last week was not very many goals. So I believe the first thing we talked about last week was my Pearl Soho sample project that I can't really tell or show you guys much about. But here it is. When we last talked, I believe I had one of the three samples left um, that I hadn't really worked on much yet or even started I don't remember um, and the second sample still needed bound off but I was waiting to be told how to bind it off by my boss well I finished the third sample also to bind off and now I am just waiting for my boss to tell me how to bind these two projects off or whether or not to bind them off and just to ship them out how they are so those are finished in my book. They are getting crossed off um, because a bind off is really not much. Like there's not that many stitches. So even if it's a really annoying bind off, um, it won't take very long. So I am hoping that I will hear what to do with this this week and I can bind these off and ship them out and then be done thinking about it. So that's the Pearl Soho project. Next, I believe we talked about the Knit E-Reader Cozy by Leslie over at Knit California, um, which I am testing for her. Now, I had showed you previously that I did knit the Kindle size for my Kindle, um, but I didn't have the snaps. Well, guess what? I've got snaps now. See, look how nice it looks holding my little Kindle. So nice. And then I showed you that I had cast on a different one for my kid's iPad. And that's finished too. See, I was right here and I finished the whole thing and even sewed the snaps in and everything. Look how nice that is. It's an iPad mini, so it's really not that much bigger than the Kindle. Um, but this project was so fun and so quick and this one the small Kindle one um, I have a Kindle Paperwhite um, last year's version because um, I bought it last year um, it took 51 grams of yarn I used fingering weight held double and then I used this color which I don't know what it is and this is one color and this is another color, but these are both colorways from Yarn Cafe Creations that I had a mini of. And then for this one, I held the blue double throughout the whole thing and I alternated between this color and this color. Um, every round I alternated for this super fun marled effect. Um, and it really looks great. I, I love how it turned out. This one only took 59 grams. Um, so it was fantastic. And that's 59 grams of them held double. So it's like 25 grams per color. Um, and I still have leftover of all three of these yarns. So if you're looking for a really great short sweet simple project these would be a great gift um, if you know someone with a Kindle or an iPad great gift um, 
endlessly customizable. Leslie is a genius. Uh, see, look there. So small. Um, Leslie, with this pattern, also created a gauge calculator. So you don't have to match her gauge. You just input your gauge and it tells you exactly how many stitches to cast on and how many rows or rounds to knit. It's incredible. I highly recommend snatching this pattern when it comes out and knitting it immediately. Um, as of right now, this pattern is set for a release date of April 13th, and I will definitely put um, links everywhere when it comes out. Um, because it, it's great. I wish I had something else <laughs> to knit a cozy for. Um, this may be what everyone I know is getting for Christmas this year. Like, it was that great. It was that fun. It was that fast. It was that easy. Um, like, I just took the marker off, but I was way down here, and I finished the rest of it in a day. Including sewing the buttons on both, or the snaps. Um, there are even several different closure methods that Leslie offers in the pattern. I did the folded brim and snaps. There's directions for a folded brim and a zipper with links to tutorials for the zipper installation. And there's, um, if you don't want to knit this much extra since it is doubled over, it takes a bit of time. Um, if you don't want to knit that much extra once you get to the end, she also included... Um, a way to use an I-cord bind off and then just put some elastic thread through there. So it's cinches in and your iPad or Kindle or e-reader isn't going anywhere. So this is a really great pattern. I really enjoyed it and I would definitely knit another one if I had another one to knit for. <laughs> so that's that. So that was finished object number two. Um, sample was the first one that was the second one so now the next thing I want to talk to you about is my plumatis things are falling over off camera I, I kind of just have a pile of everything I want to talk to you guys about right here off camera on top of my little um, yarn storage that's like down off camera over here and things are falling everywhere. Um, the Plumatis is by Julie Knits in Paris, I think. Check the screen for correctness. Um, and it was published in Pom Pom Magazine in issue 40, I believe. I think issue 40. I'll write that on the screen if it's wrong. Um, and I'm knitting this up in this beautiful brushed cashmere by Treehouse Knits. This is their Truffula Cashmere Base. And this particular color is called Very Beetlejuice. And it is from their Favorites collection last year. So last week, I had just finished the knitting in the round on the body because this pattern is worked bottom up. Um, and I had finished working in the round for the body and I was separating for the back panel and the front panel. Um, for this week I had wanted to finish the back panel. Not only did I finish the back panel, you can see the marker here is where I was last week. That's the back panel. There's a cute little um, keyhole moment in the back that will be finished with a little button. I also finished the front panel and I joined the shoulders. I hope that brushing against the mic didn't make a terrible sound. Um, see it's just a three needle bind off at the shoulder and look how gorgeous that lace is. It's so good. So all I have left on this are the sleeves and I haven't yet decided if I want to do short or long sleeves. And um, I'm just going to do an I-cord around the neckline. Um, now, if I do the I-cord on the neckline and decide that it needs more than that, that's a separate thing. Um, but 
as of right now, I'm thinking just the I cord for the neckline because for this pattern, um, there is a collar, which you saw in the picture. It's like a really frilly collar and that's not really my style, but the collar is worked off of an I cord. So there are even instructions on how to do the I cord, which is fantastic. My watch is beeping at me. Okay, it's nothing. Um, so that's how that went this week. Um, I'm thinking I would like to do short sleeves, but I haven't completely decided yet. Um, I think I'll knit two short sleeves and then try it on and see what I think. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is the neckline though. So I'm going to do the eye cord around the neckline and we'll go from there. So that's how things went for the Plumidus this week. I got a lot done and I'm very pleased with it and I am no longer worried about finishing it for the bridal shower that I would like to wear it to. The goal will be to finish this for next week and tell you all about it. Next, which I didn't even tell you guys that I wanted to work on this week, but it was spring break for my kids, so not teaching them half the day gave me a lot of time to knit this week. And I think I forgot about that last week when I said I wouldn't have time to do anything else. Well, boy was I wrong. Okay, so next I'm going to tell you about my keeper, which is by Jen over at JP Knits Things and One Wild. Oh, I forgot to take those off. I had the neck hole pinned closed with giant stitch markers um, because I'm alternating skeins and doing the body um, alternating skeins. It's easiest for me if I just throw the skein I'm not working with inside the body um, and then it doesn't get tangled. But anyway, I am knitting this up in, this is all I have left. Um, in this beautiful yarn from Red Door Fiber Studio. This is their classic DK base, which is 100% superwash merino, and it is in the colorway Starfall from their Akatar collection a few years ago. And I am holding that double with, I have one extra skein, with Hobie's Alpaca Blaze, which is a lace weight that is an acrylic alpaca and polyamide blend. Um, and this is the color 30. So creative. Here we go. Look at that. The green stitch marker is where I was last time I worked on this. So I knit all of this body, all of that, all of that body. Look at this. I attached the pocket today. And then I, there's eight rounds that you knit after the pocket before the ribbing. So guess what? I've only got the ribbing left on this thing. How great is that? Anyway, so the goal is to finish this for next week. Um, if it comes down to either finishing my plumidus or finishing my keeper, obviously I'm going to choose my plumidus. Um, but I do also have a new cast on. Kind of. Kind of. I'm sure you guys remember from last week that I told you about the um, Lento Love KAL that is being hosted by Lina Magazine and La Bien Ami, which is a yarn shop in France. Um, and I said I wanted to participate in that and that I had two sets of yarn two sweater quantities enough to knit two lentos for this. Um, I'm talking about the lento pattern by, I'm going to butcher this person's name and I'm so sorry, but I believe it's Yona Halen, but I don't know. If you know how to say this, please let me know. Um, now technically I haven't cast on, I knit my swatch, but look at that. This is one of the um, yarns, two yarns, I guess, that I want to knit this sweater in. I have two that I'd like to knit. 
Um, this is, I actually have ball bands and stuff for both. So I will just show you. I'm knitting this up in these two beauties. Um, this one is by Treehouse Knits and it's called First Flurries is the colorway and it's on the Cashmere Elm Sock Base which is an 80% superwash merino wool, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon and it's 383 yards per 100 grams. And it is a fingering weight base. Look at this. Look how gorgeous this color is. I picked this up in the Favorites Collection Overflow, which was great. And this beauty is by Dusty Yarn Co. This is their Classic Surrey Lace, um, and it's a 75% Baby Surrey Alpaca, 25% Silk, um, and 459 yards per 50 grams. And this is the colorway Shook. And those, these two, they just look at that they look great together i'm very excited about it um, i think i'm actually going to cast this on this evening if i have time after editing this video um, but i can at least cast on the neckline right like it shouldn't be that hard um, i actually just unpinned this so i haven't 100 percent rechecked my gauge yet but gauge was right on when i had it pinned so I'm not going to shove that in the bag I will leave it on my notebook down here um, but I'm very excited about that I've been wanting to knit this sweater for so long and this KAL was a great way to do it it goes from April 6th which was yesterday for me and May 6th so it's not very long but this sweater um, is knit on size 10 needles and that's US size 10 so it goes really fast it's a very open gauge and it should be like the coziest sweatshirt like ever i also wanted to knit this up in this yarn if you remember and i said i wanted to get some neon green from knit picks in mohair to go with this well i did and i will show it to you in the acquisitions part of this program um but that's the other color I wanted to knit it with. But we'll talk about that in acquisitions. So that's that. Next project is I was selected to test knit the Catalonia crop by Perfectly Knotted on Instagram. And I need you guys to help me pick what yarn to knit it in. Um, you can see the picture or the picture you can see the picture it's um, her sample is knit with um, two strands of fingering weight yarn held double um, and for my size I think that I will need three skeins of yarn um, of fingering weight I may only need two but I think I'll need three so actually now that I'm thinking about it I may only need two because the size measurements that she gave us, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be accounting for 20% negative ease or not. Okay, I may only need two skeins and that may change things. <laughs> Hold please. Okay, well, if I need three skeins, this is choice number one. This is by Loop and Whirl Fiber Co. I knit a sample for them last year. This is coming undone. Um, and I got a gift card as payment. And I picked this up. This beautifulness. This is their Wicked Merino base, which is a... 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's 400 yards per 100 grams. Um, and this is the colorway Ruby Tailed Wasp from their like bug collection last year. Um, and yeah, this wasp is really this color. Can you believe that? There's a wasp this color? It's amazing. Look it up. Or I'll put a picture of the Ruby Tailed Wasp on the screen and you can decide. 
yeah, it's the same, right? So this is choice one. My watch just buzzed like eight times. Oh my gosh. The other choice is this. This is like a purpley, brown, green, tan. Um, these are actually two different colorways, but they look so similar that I don't think you'll notice um, if I'm holding them double. Like this is one colorway and this is another colorway. Um, and this base is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And it's 463 grams per 100, or 463 yards per 100 grams. Um, but that's all I'm going to tell you. Okay, so what do we think? Which one? I mean, either will be incredible, but which one do you like better for this crop top? I don't know. Me, myself, and I want to know. Okay, now. I'm looking at my yarn collection here um, in things that don't in things that don't currently have plans for and in case I only need two skeins that changes things then we could use this which is an 8515 merino nylon with 436 yards per 100 grams or could use these two that are very similar um, this one is by Plank and Stella it's a Kame sock it's a 7525 merino nylon at 463 per 100 grams and this is the colorway burnt honey I got this in a D stash or this one by woolen boon um, which is 100% uh, superwash merino 435 per 100 grams and this is the colorway dirty chai we could do those together that would be really pretty do I have any other two skeins? I mean, this would be insanity. This this is too much. This is too much. Those were a um, Halloween colorway, I believe, from Gamer Crafting. I've got quite a few 50 gram skeins from Spun Right Round. Um, it's a fade, or two fades, rather, but, like, these could be held together. Um, this is their classic fingering base. Um, this colorway is Quake, and this is Hellbent. That could be cool. Let's see. The next color down in the fade is this one that might be a bit much for me there's also a black and then the white so it goes oh no I'm dropping everything ah literally everything it's really hard to hold this that's how the fade goes so like any two next to each other could be held together nicely um, for that so that's an option any of those this one's jet we already said this one was quake this one's hellbent this one's dirty taffy and the last one is walk like a cat talk like a fish I don't know if that's a reference of some kind um, so those are choices as well I think that's all I mean it's not but I don't feel like going through more of it right now 
So those are the choices. You let me know which one you guys like the best in the comments. Um, I won't be receiving the pattern for this one until next week and I won't be starting knitting it until I finish my plumidus. It's not due until June. So I have plenty of time for that. Um, let me know what you think on colorways. Um, I can probably post a poll in the community section um, with pictures of each color if that's helpful. Um, and then that's all the whips. That's all, that's all the, the projects that I have going on right now. So next part of this show is what am I wearing? Today I am wearing my Limpkin sweater by Andrea Vaughn. I knit this up in this blue color is from Pixie Yarns. It's a DK, um, but it's a pretty thin DK. And the gray is, I think, technically a sport weight. Um, it's the same as this. It's Drops Charisma. And it's a 100% um, wool. I don't remember what color way this one is. Um, but I test knit this for her a couple years ago. I love this sweater. I never wore it until this year um, because I made it too cropped and I never felt like going in and adding length. Well, this past year I did. I added like three more inches to the body and now I wear it all the time. It's great. I wore it yesterday. I'm wearing it today. See, I can even tell you how many times I wore it last month. Let's see. I apparently stopped writing what I was wearing at the end of the month last month. And I apparently didn't wear it last month, unless I wore it in one of the times that I didn't write down from the 25th to the 31st. <laughs> okay. It was probably too warm. This sweater is very warm because of the yarn I knitted in. Um, back in February, I wore it five times. And then in January, I flipped too far. I didn't wear it in January, but I didn't start this knitting journal until January 7th or 8th, so I don't have information for the beginning of the month, so I might have worn it at the beginning of that month. But anyway, I wear it relatively often, and I like it a lot. Andrea is an amazing person. She is incredible to her test knitters, and I would highly recommend this and all of her patterns because they're great. Also, earrings I'm wearing. These are super fun cat earrings, and they are from Keep Going Club on Etsy and Instagram. They're super comfortable. I love all their stuff. So, next. Goals for this past week and next week. So, let's look at my handy-dandy notebook. Um, I wanted to finish the third sample for Pearl Soho. Check. I did that. Minus the bind off of the two. I wanted to finish the back panel on my plumidus. Check. I did that. I wanted to start the front panel for my plumidus. Check mark. Did that. I wanted to finish my iPad cozy. Check mark. Did that. I wanted to sew the snaps in on my Kindle cozy and my iPad cozy. Check. I did that. Super stretch goal was to finish the front panel of my plumidus did that too. And I worked on my keeper. So goals for this coming week. Um, I would like to get those samples shipped out. I mean, that has nothing to do with me. I just have to wait. But I think the original due date was the 13th and that's this week. So I'd imagine they'll let me know before that. Um, so that should get done. Next goal, I want to finish my plumidus. 
Next goal, I want to finish my keeper. And last goal, I want to cast on my lento. And I'm not gonna say how much I wanna get done on that, just wanna cast it on. Um, so those are the goals for this coming week. Next up, we have acquisitions. So first, I'll tell you about the yarn that I got to go with this for the other lento I want to knit. Is it perfect or what? Look at this. Look at it. It's perfect, right? It's perfect. It's so perfect. Okay, this is Knit Picks Aloft, um, which is their lace weight silk mohair base. It's 72% super kid mohair and 28% silk. It's 260 yards per 25 grams, and this color is called Tarragon. And I got four skeins of this. I'll probably only need three, but it was 20% off when I bought it, so I figured I'd play safe and get the fourth skein. Um, because 260 yards, I, I can't do math. Um, Three skeins is less than 900 yards, and I believe that I will need around 900 for the um, Lento, but four is fine. So I got these four. You can get some of this beautifulness or anything else at Knit Picks by clicking the link in the description box. Um, I am an affiliate with them. I earn a small commission if you purchase anything through my link, and it costs nothing for you, which is great. So, if you want to get some of this, go for it. And this is, is just going to be beautiful. It's going to be so beautiful. So, I don't know when that will get cast on. I don't know if it will happen during the... Um, Lento Love KAL or not. Um, that will be entirely dependent on how much other stuff I get done. We'll just have to see. Now, the other thing that came in this week is this. I'm sure you guys remember the Marigold Tea that I knit for Terrapin Fiberworks. Um, and I got paid by them in a gift card to their shop. Um, and I picked up three skeins of this. This is from her newest collection. Um, this is called FET, or FETE, FETE, F-E-T-E, -E, with an accent on the first E here. I'll show you. Um, again, this is by Terrapin Fiberworks, and this is their Severn Fingering, which is 100% tensile. 437 yards per 100 grams um, and tensile if you don't know is um, a plant-based silk so it's super soft it's so shiny and it's just this gorgeous purple green blue it's so beautiful I have no idea what I'm going to knit with this but it is going to be the most beautiful most softest most wonderful summer something t-shirt of some kind and I can't I, I want to knit something with this immediately, but I cannot right now. <laughs> now, the next thing I got, I was waiting for her to add this colorway to her dyed to order this past week. It was part of the Arise collection, and this is Cricket Song. It's the most beautiful, like, olivey green. I love an olive green. Um, and this is on Chesapeake fingering, which is 100% organic cotton. And it's 437 yards per 100 grams. So exactly the same as the tensile. Um, and it's, I love this color. It's stunning. This will also be some kind of tea or tank or something like that. And it will be fabulous whenever I get to cast that on. And who knows when that'll be? I don't know. Um, I also got another row counter from Twice Sheared Sheep, but I left it downstairs. So I'm not going to show it to you. 
It wasn't their standard row counter. It's like the pattern repeat row counter, so it's only got five beads, um, but I've been using it on my Plumidus um, so that I know which row of the pattern I'm on at all times um, because that's how it got messed up and I had to restart last week. So that was really annoying and I would like it to not happen again. And I think that's everything for this week. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. And um, if you did, click that little like button that tells YouTube that you liked this video and they'll show it to other people. And hit that subscribe button. I would love, 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 love to hit 100 subscribers by my birthday, which is May 9th. That would mean the absolute world to me. I would love it so much. Um, so if you could click that little subscribe button, if you're enjoying my content, I would be forever grateful. You can also go check me out over on Instagram. Um, I post more daily things there, so then you don't have to wait a week to hear from me. So thanks so much for stopping by, and I will see you next week. Bye! <laughs>